In this video, we're going to go over the easiest way that I know how to train a model for stable diffusion. So let's get into it. Well, to train a model, you're going to first need for this process around 10 to 15 images. I have up to 25, sometimes 30. Any of them really work, it's up to you. I like to have a higher number, it seems to work better for me, but you can get away with 15 or 14, no problem. So as you can see on the screen, this is my friend Ricky and I have a bunch of different sizes here. And we have a couple different processes that we wanna go through if we wanna get this right for the to train the model. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to this place called burmy.net or burn.net. And it's going to help you resize these images to be 512 by 512, which is what you need in order to train a model for stable diffusion. So all you'll have to do is I'll just grab all of my images here. I'll just drag and drop them. There's 21. And you can see it's going to automatically square them up for me. Now, some of my images like this one might be good. Or, you know, this one or this one. Those are generally the right distance you want. So these bigger ones. If where it says for just training a face, I wouldn't use. So instead I would upscale this and then crop in. So that way they're the right size. And then once you go through that process, you just can click save a zip or just save the files. And then you'll have your files here all at the right size. Now, normally when I do this, because of past training processes, I will normally name it for what I want it to call to be. So for this one, it's just Ricky Grant. And normally what you might want to do is if you have a more common name, you might want to take out the vowels or add in numbers because if there's already your name in there, then it might screw it up. So for example, when I use my name, Russell Klimas, it I was like, man, it just doesn't work. And then once I took out the vowels, then it worked really well. So it wasn't just me. It was because there was some of the Russell in there, some of the Klimas in there that was screwing it up. So that's something that you need to be aware of. So once you have all of your options, all of your images, you're gonna to go to stable-diffusion-art.com slash dream booth. And I found that this is the easiest way to do this. Then what you're gonna do is it's, it explains it to you like basically what is dream booth, how does this thing work, and talks about Burmy. And then we're gonna get into the training. So you're going to come down to the bottom here and it says open collab notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Okay. So this is actually a really, really easy process. So first we have dream booth it says model name, one way ML slash stable diffusion version 1.5. So this is what I normally train on to start just for like a really good base. And it does really well. Just if you're trying to do some fancy images, sci-fi images, it does a fantastic job. So this is just the model that you can use. You can use other models that you can find on this link. So if I click that link, it's gonna bring me to Hugging Phase and you can put in other models to train with. For whatever reason, I haven't had success with it yet, but I know that it's doable because other people have. So all you have to do then, so it says runway ML slash save the fusion, right? So then say we wanted to use some other model, uh, we'll just, put in one that I know like uh, Dreamscaper or Dream, here, Dream Like Art, right? We'll use Dream Like Art Photo Reel. So then when you just copy this and you would put it in here like that and then that should allow you to train on that model. But we're just gonna train on the 1.5 because I know this works. Then we have the instance prompt and the class prompt. So I'm just gonna put in, if I can type correctly, Ricky Grants. And then I'm shooting the same thing here. Cool. And then we'll just keep it at training steps of 800. And then all we have to do is click play. And you're gonna go ahead and click run anyway. And then you're just gonna wait for this to get done. It shouldn't take super long. And yes, I wanna connect to my Google Drive. And you're gonna go ahead and connect to it. And allow. Awesome. So now you see that we connected to a GPU that Google has. We click go ahead and click browse here. And I know where 
mine are it's going to take me a second to get there though reference photos ricky awesome so i'm just going to go ahead and grab all of these i'm going to click open and then it's going to load all of these up and it shouldn't take very long as you can see mine is just going through them pretty fast awesome they've loaded and now as soon as this loaded those it's just going to start the process for you you don't have to do any more work after that see it's installing all the stuff and with around this many photos it might take around half an hour or a little less but it's going to tell you at the end here so we're going to see how long it's going to take and i will jump back through the magic of video editing and we'll see how long it is so i ended up having to go back and try it a couple different times and for this i used the trigger word of rkkgrnt just to get rid of any vowels because i was running into some issues and then instead of 800 steps i did 1600 when i was using 25 photos just to try to give more of those photos more of a chance in previous trainings you would always do a thousand steps for every photo so technically i should have done 2500 but this came out pretty well so when it's done it's going to generate some images based off of the trigger word you did. And you can see these more look like album covers than anything other than the first one. But the first one does look like Ricky. So then afterwards, what I did is I put photo of my trigger word here. And then I generally, if I'm trying to go for a photo, share focus, high detail, smooth, and then fine art photography by Flora Borsi, who is a fantastic photographer. Make sure to go check them out if you haven't checked them out already. And if I use that and then I have this very, very long negative keyword list, let's just take this out for now. And we're just going to run this at an inference of with 30 steps. Guided skill 7.5 is always good. And it's going to give us two examples and then keep it at 512 by 512 because, again, we trained that on those photos. So that's what it's going to be best with. And then we'll just, the seed will just be random. And this is what I did with the negative prompt, and you can tell that it does look like Ricky. Now let's run it without the negative prompt, just to see what we get. And while this one is kind of funky, it does look like Ricky, and so does this one. So it's pretty safe to say that this is a model that's going to work. Now if you want to find your model that was made during this process, if you go look in your main Google Drive, you will see that it's called model.ckpt. Now, when you make these, just make again, make sure that you have around like 45 gigs of space free for sure, because it is a big file. And then all you have to do is go ahead and download it to use it locally. Or if you're going to be using the Google Collab, using Google Collab to use Stable Fusion Online, then you just want to make sure that you keep the model within that so you can call it when you want to generate. And that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and look forward to more videos like this in the future. I'm gonna be diving a lot more into Stable Diffusion and other AI generators, so please stick around. See you later.